So I can bring you some breaking news now. The flag is flying at half-mast at Buckingham Palace. Uh, the UK's Prime Minister has announced that uh, the... Uh, yes, the flag is being lured at Buckingham Palace. Queen Elizabeth II has passed away. The moment uh, many people never really imagined would happen has now happened. The Queen, somebody who's always been there, certainly if you live or have lived in Britain, even around the world, one of the most famous faces of all. So we can confirm the news that Queen Elizabeth II has died at Balmoral in Scotland. Uh, her son, with her death, her son Charles becomes Britain's new king. He will be King Charles III. Queen Elizabeth II, hugely popular at home, witnessed so much life and so much history. Indeed, the longest reign in British history. And now the flag is flying at half-mast over Buckingham Palace because the Queen has died. She has been this anchor and a focus uh, for national identity and continuity and represented duty and dignity and decency. And so much has changed in the world in her lifetime. But the one constant in the midst of all of that, of her more than 70 years of being queen, has been her. Well, she was 96 years old, born on April the 21st, 1926, and came to the throne on the death of her father in 1952, and became the longest reigning monarch in British history. Let's hear now from Andrew Simmons, who takes a look back at her life. In modern times, no monarch on earth could claim the level of popularity and respect that Queen Elizabeth II enjoyed right into her advancing years. Her reign was the longest in British history, marked in spectacular style by the first ever Platinum Jubilee. Scenes reminiscent to the end of the Second World War in 1945. She was celebrating 70 years on the throne. What a contrast to 2021, the year before, and this enduring image of a queen alone with her sorrow, yet stoic. The death of her husband, Prince Philip, and a marriage that lasted 73 years had focused minds on her remarkable reign. She wasn't born to be queen. Her childhood was carefree here with Sister Margaret. But then came change. At 10, she found herself as heir to the throne. Her uncle, King Edward VIII, abdicated. Her father became king. She was leading a very quiet family life, uh, fairly out of the, the news when the abdication came. It wasn't her destined role from birth. And I think that her father taught her incredibly well and she learned her lesson very well, as it were. Princess Elizabeth was 25 when she assumed the British throne, returning from a visit to Kenya after the sudden death of King George VI. By the time she was crowned queen, she was 27. It was only six years after she'd married Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh. A lifetime of service ahead of her and the end of a naval career for Philip, who'd be by her side for the rest of his life. As she took the throne, Britain with its empire was losing its grip on global power. The Queen's first mission, along with her husband, was a royal tour. As head of the Commonwealth, she visited countries preparing transformation to independence from Britain. Go back to the early 1950s. There she is. Uh, it takes a bit to uh, get it through to your own mind that you know this is a person who, who conversed with uh, the Churchills, the Nehru's, uh, the very early Commonwealth leaders. The Queen was able to lift the dark cloud of colonial attitudes, ensuring the Commonwealth became a multiracial, multinational association. It was perhaps her biggest achievement, 
and she was passionate about the Commonwealth throughout her reign. Back home, it might even look like a normal life, a love of dogs and a passion for horse racing. And Raya Moore has won for Her Majesty the Queen. She was herself a horsewoman and she loved the outdoors. As a mother, though, there were challenges. Like all the best families, we have our share of eccentricities, of impetuous and wayward youngsters, <laughs> and of family disagreements. The heir to the throne, Charles, her eldest son, had become Prince of Wales in 1969. At the age of 32, he married Diana Spencer. She had just turned 20 and was a stranger to royal life. It was an unhappy marriage ending in divorce. Then in 1997, Princess Diana was killed in a Paris car crash. Initially, the Queen didn't publicly show grief. She was staying in Scotland while distraught crowds gathered at Buckingham Palace. I think Diana's death was a very dangerous moment for the monarchy. I think that was, the, was possibly the one moment where you can look back on, on a pretty flawless reign and say that at that moment, I think the Queen lost her, her judgment. The Queen had a special affection for Charles and Diana's two sons, William and Harry. Prince Harry was seen by royal watchers as the Queen's favorite grandson, but he was to take his grandmother through some bad times. He married an American actress, Meghan Markle. They left their royal duties and moved to America as private citizens. The couple appeared on a US television network with scathing attacks on the royal family for making them unhappy. Meghan Markle said a member of the royal family made racist remarks. The Queen's personal life may have had its ups and downs, and family may not have come first all the time. While British monarchs don't have absolute power, they can influence and steer their political leaders. A long list of prime ministers followed in the footsteps of Winston Churchill in their audiences with the Queen, each with a piece of history to share with her. Boris Johnson here, the 14th leader and the man who took the UK out of the European Union in 2020. He also had to handle the country's response to the coronavirus pandemic a crisis the Queen addressed in a rare TV appearance. We should take comfort that while we may have more still to endure, better days will return. We will be with our friends again. We will be with our families again. We will meet again. Queen Elizabeth's adult life was devoted to duty. How will she be remembered? I think she had assumed the status of a national icon, the nation's grandmother. Her legacy will be the fact that the royal family is in a position to survive and indeed thrive. That has by, by no means been a given throughout her reign. Elizabeth II, queen of a commonwealth, not an empire, had always shown unflinching determination. In death, as in life, she'll be revered by many millions here in the UK and beyond. <laughs>